Hey guys, today we are going to go over some interesting card prices. Let's go over Sarah Avenger, Champs Promo, one of the most gorgeous cards, is $90. Not a card that sees a terrible amount of play modern. Sometimes it's okay with A for Vial, but overall it is not something that will, will be a tier 1 deck anytime soon in modern. And definitely not in Legacy or the older formats. One of the reasons it is so expensive, Angel Collectors, and it's not that common. The Champs promos are relatively hard to get. If you do come across a copy of a Champs promo, you should pick it up right away. This card is something that is mostly a collector's item and not necessarily something that you would want to play with but you would want it in your binder just to show off. It is a gorgeous card. I do remember when they announced that there would be a two drop angel and that was like crazy, right? Now we didn't know it would be restricted in the way it is, but still. Next, we will talk about Command Tower from Commander's Arsenal. This card has been steadily going up in price to $55. And it has been a very good investment, a long-term investment. As you can see, it was under $10 at one time, then spiked to 20, and then spiked to 40, and now it eventually spiked to 60, and now it's back to 55. Commander is where the money is. Uh, there's no other explanation for it. Uh, money is not in standard. Money is not in modern, given the ability for them to reprint. And the eternal format the eternal masters iconic masters 25th anniversary mo masters modern masters there's a lot of danger in holding on to modern cards there's less danger holding on to the best version of the foil of certain cards and to many this is considered the best version it is a very very low production in commander's arsenal i have never even seen a Com commander's arsenal in person Although I would probably like to buy it. Next, let's talk about this card. This card was a sub, looks like sub $50 card, maybe $60 card, Gifts Given. It is a holiday promo, and stores were given these as a thank you, as well as, I believe, distributors and other people who just quickly put it on eBay. $160 is the price for this card. I remember it being around 60 and I was like, nah, I'm gonna wait for it to drop. Typically these cards are just, if they either hold their price or they go straight up. The limited and Magic is becoming more of a, and more of a collector's paradise in terms of collectors, in terms of reserve lists, in terms of older traditional cards. Black border cards like Alpha Beta have always been in demand, but they have been increasingly in demand today. And this is one of them. Gifts, on gi Gifts Given is a collector's item, and we are going to talk about different collector's items that are very expensive. Commander's Arsenal would also be a collector's item. So let's talk about media promo. If I'm correct, this is coming from a comic book. So Magic has comic books. And I've never read any of them. I heard that they are okay, too good. This is surely a collector's item at $26. When it came out, I don't remember it being that expensive. The comic book itself is like 5 or $6, right? So to have a card that is worth $26, that would mean regardless of the comic book, which you could light on fire, it's a great deal. Even that buy list, assuming this buy list for half, which is probably since it's $26, $13 buy list or even $10 buy list, you just buy every single comic and then you would get this promotional card. I'm pretty sure I have this because I didn't buy the comics, but one of my friend bought the comics because she actually liked reading the comics and she just gave me all the cards. So I have like pretty much every comic book card and this is a good one. It's a good one. It's a good card. The artwork is intriguing. I believe I have this one. It's Ashiok. Uh, and Doc. Next, uh, Chalice of the Void. This was a quick price correction. It's $167 now. It used to be under 100 bucks at one time, which would have been incredible buy since it was a long, 
since it wasn't just one time, it's for most of its life, it's been under sixty, under a hundred dollars. Now it is a hundred and sixty-seven. So not bad, almost a double. Sixty-seven percent increase is not something you see readily on a high valuable card. Normally, the higher the value of the card, the less the percent increases because the margin on top. So when you buy list something for a uh, when you buy list a hundred dollar card, you can probably get fifty or sixty for it. If you buy list a one dollar card, you'd be lucky to get a quarter. That's why when this card goes up, it's actually way more valuable than when a, a fifty cent card goes to a dollar, right? Maybe the buy list isn't even moving the card, but here when a card goes up from uh, let's say a hundred dollars to one hundred and sixty seven, yeah, that buy list has moved quite a bit. So a good card, I li I like it. Now let's talk about JSD Mind Scope. There, I'm going to point out to his foil, and I am going to go ahead and say that it is a good price. Jace himself at seventy dollars for the original version, and if I had to pick one version, yes, I would pick the original version. Although the Eternal Masters, I know, is cheaper and it has the stamp. I really like having the stamp, but seventy dollars, like, and the fact that you can buy him for much less, like, uh, I was seeing AB Auction almost finished. Around fifty-five dollars, it looks like it finished around. How the mighty Jace has fallen! All it takes is for him to be unbanned. That's it. This is a high-risk, high-reward planeswalker where there's only one circumstance you can make a ton of money from, and that is him being unbanned. As we get stronger and stronger cards, I think it's going to become a reality. Not only do we get stronger cards, but the main issue here is blue is getting tremendously hit. The tax and probe got hit, and that's you know in a long line of ponders and other cantrips that are very good. So yeah, talking about special cards, the Spirit Dragon from Fate Promo. So I believe every ten packs there was one Spirit Dragon. I don't know, maybe every twenty packs there's one Spirit Dragon. So at pre-release, there should have been a few of these opened at that particular time. No one knew that this was valuable, and they were trading it as you know a nice planeswalker for forty dollars. This is one of the only times in the planeswalker history something goes up after pre-release. The only other time I can remember is in a noticeable way, doubling or going you know from a hundred like this card used to be at sub hundred to all the way up to 200 and almost up to 250 at one time right after pre-release the only other card i can remember is elspeth sun's champion and that one took a pro tour to move her price otherwise mostly planeswalkers either start up out very expensive and then keep that price tag or they just plummet into oblivion which is what gideon has done now gideon i heard is under ten dollars now Ooh, once he's way under $10, I will make a video about how dumb it is once to buy Gideon's, right? So dumb. But that doesn't mean I didn't do it. I don't take my own advice a lot of times. Okay, Dark Depths. I want to really focus on this card because of all the leaks. And the This card was a penny stock. You can't see on this graph, but trust me, it was a penny stock before Vampire Hex Mage was printed. Because if you don't have a way to remove counters and you really didn't back then, then this was a terrible card. It was just awful. It couldn't even produce mana for you. But here's the interesting part. Vampire Hex Maids get spoiled and then boop, zoop, like right through the roof it goes. And now it is a $190 foil. I have a good story about this. I do not own a foil. But I have a friend who owned quite a bit of them, and he really liked Snowlands. He actually bought this card. And back then, like, he was super casual. I feel like it was in college? Maybe not college, maybe grad school. But he had a ton of these, and I asked him, like, how did he come across them, and why would he want them? At that time, I knew they were valuable. And the reason was, oh, Vampire Hex Mage was Zendikar, original Zendikar. That's when this card spiked like no other card I've ever seen. But the problem was it spiked before Vampire Hex Mage was announced. And, and during those times, we had stuff called God Books. All the way up to New Phyrexia, people, article writers, pros, 
friends of pros, they would all get access to this book, which is kind of like, you know, the fat pack book that we now get that shows every card. That's pretty much what they got. So they could write articles a month or in advance because internet wasn't what internet is today. I am so sad because the people who have lots of these cards and especially foils, they have no idea what they are worth because the only deck that played it is this random tier four snow deck. They relied on snow cards. And this was to them just another cool legendary snow card that didn't even produce mana. So don't ask me why they put them in the decks, but they did because it was an additional snow effect. You wouldn't actually play for the creature because you had no hope of getting the creature in play. There, there was no mechanic before Vampire Hex made to get the creature in play f fast. So what happened was the only people who played it were super casual people who wanted it in their snow deck. And that was it. And Code Snap wasn't a great set either, so you're not looking at a large amount of people there. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.